What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. Got another quick search and recovery for you. We're headed just the next cove down from us here at the marina and we're gonna be right up against the dam area here. Uh, what we're looking for again is a very expensive pair of sunglasses, or around $400 pair of sunglasses, and also a, like a dock box that people would put life jackets and stuff like that in. Uh, my client thinks that the wind possibly blew it off the end of their dock. They didn't really have it strapped down or anything. But uh, we're going to be looking for that as well. Not sure if that's where it's at. Not sure if somebody stole it. But we're going to go look for it. Uh, sunglasses and roughly 5 to 10 foot uh, based off my guesstimations of where we're at. Um, it is going to be kind of dark simply because we've had so much rain here lately. Um, but hopefully we should have success and find them. But let's, uh, let's get down here and jump in the water and see what we find. All right, guys. So here I am at the beginning of the dive. And I'm getting my fins on. And the first thing, of course, I need to do is get oriented to where the search site is. So once I get my fins on, I'm going to swim over to where the gentleman said he was at. And when he dropped his um, glasses into the water. And I've dove this area before. Yeah, We've did an underwater right? cleanup to this area. However, not knowing everything that's down there before I actually begin my search and to be able to determine what type of search pattern. I'm just going to do a quick survey of the area just to see what's there, to see what type of debris is there. Um, and at, of course at the same time search for the sunglasses as well. So the first part of this dive, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm kind of surveying the area here. I'm looking for hazards. I'm looking say for trees. Anything that if I decide to say do a circle search, anything that my line can get entangled in, that's what I'm looking for here. At the same time, of course, looking for his glasses. And I'm just kind of making note of everything I see. There's a lot of center blocks here. And one thing, one technique that I use a lot, somebody asked me in a previous video, what is my trim during these searches? Am I perfectly horizontal and all that? A lot of times on searches like this, I'm almost inverted, if you will. That means I'm head down, my feet are high, and I can do a much more methodical search in that manner because I'm not stirring up the bottom in any way, shape, or form. Even if you're perfectly horizontally trimmed, if you're in an area like us where our visibility is not all that great, you have to be almost on the bottom to see. So to go inverted, put your face down, keep your feet up above you, you can do a much slower search, more methodical search, and see more by staying almost inverted. But what I'm using these center blocks here for is I'm basically just bouncing off of them. So I am neutrally buoyant, but instead of kicking and swimming along, I'm just simply pulling myself along. If I see a big rock or something, I'll reach up, kind of grab on it and pull myself along a little bit more. Uh, and that way I don't stir up anything. Uh, but like I said, I'm just doing a survey here, just seeing what is on the bottom looking for any uh, debris, any hazards, anything like that. Uh, and I'll spend a few minutes doing this. And like I said, that helps me determine what type of search I need to be uh, conducting to help find his sunglasses. But at the same time, I'm, I'm able to search as well. Now, depth's not very deep. I'm only about six to seven foot of water here. But there you'll see some turbidity in the water there. Um, that's actually being caused by a boat that's up on top. Um, during this search, I was actually hired to go do another search and my co-owner was coming to pick me up in the boat as soon as I finished this one so um, all that turbidity that's being stirred up there that was from the boat that was being approached and the waves that were splashing in on towards me so that's why the visibility is starting to get a little bit worse here but I'm going to zoom forward a little bit for you because here, like I said, all I'm doing is just a survey and I'm trying to determine uh, what type of search pattern is going to work best for this area. There's no debris as far as trees or stumps or anything like that that could hinder a circle search or a sweep search. But I'm going to zoom forward for you and then we'll get on with the search itself. So now that I've did kind of my survey of the area and determined uh, what type of search pattern will work, I actually was able to determine that several would work. I could do a jack stay, I could do a sweep search, I could do a circle search. So it, it's a wide open um, ball game here for me, depending on what play I want to make. But I'm going to come back up to the top. I'm going to reorient to where I need to be. And when I did that, the client actually told me, well, I think my glasses are actually in a different area. So I had to, to shift where I was going to actually conduct my search. However, 
I already knew what was down there. So that that helped me out a lot doing that initial survey dive. And here I found this hammer too. But um, it helped me out doing that initial survey because it, it told me what was down there and I could set up in any way shape or form I could use any of the search patterns um, but now all I'm gonna do and there you can see that boat that come in earlier I was telling you about that's my co-owner there he was actually coming to pick me up after this dive to go do another search as well but I'm gonna orient myself to exactly where he said the glasses was I'm gonna drop down and of course this search is very very quick I'm gonna say maybe less than 30 seconds I swim up on them so uh, but I just did a quick orientation took a compass heading real quick and then started swimming out in that direction uh, being that I'm only in about six to seven foot of water my, my search radius is not very big and then of course there as you can see I, I found his sunglasses uh, Quick note, I did mention at the beginning of the video that I was looking for a box as well. Uh, I, I'm going to take that part out of the video because the box was not there. Uh, we ended up determining that there was so much flotation in it, it actually floated on downstream before it actually sunk. So you won't actually see the search for that because I think I searched for about 30 minutes for that box and MJ couldn't Ford. actually find it. But um, it, it was a large size box. It should have sunk, but mm -hmm. it actually didn't. It floated, but I guess they're Maui yep, Jim. That's pretty much that's the search for these. Yeah, Maui Jims. Yeah. All right, guys. So I just got finished up and getting the video edited here for you. And one thing that I want you to understand is, anytime you do a search like this, being able to pick the correct search pattern is crucial to your success. Now here at the first part of this dive, basically all I did was just a survey dive. I went down to see what was there, to see what the bottom composition was like, see if there's any debris, to see what the, uh, see if there was an incline, because all that would have told me exactly how to conduct a search. If I'd have been on an incline, I'd either use a jack stay or maybe a sweeping search. If it's a good flat bottom and there's absolutely no debris, I'd either use a sleep, sweeping pattern or a circle search based off where I was at. Um, so during that first part of the dive, I, I was searching for his sunglasses, but I was also doing a survey of the area to see what was there to help determine what type of search pattern uh, to use. Of course, I didn't find them during the first part of the dive, but once I come up to regroup and to set up for the actual search itself, if you will, he told me that he thought that it was in a different area. So of course, I went out to that different area. I'd already did a survey, so I knew what was there. I kind of took a quick compass heading and just ran straight out to where he said they was. And of course, there were the sunglasses so i had a successful search now as far as the dock box goes i did look for it however i, I was unsuccessful there and it was a pretty large style box it's only about four or five feet where i was at so you know i was thinking maybe it's right here however come to find out there was quite a bit of flotation in the box and he had lost it a couple months ago or actually he lost it said he lost it during the winter time so there's a very um likelihood chance that that box had floated downstream down towards the dam and could have even possibly went over the dam uh, since this past winter. But guys, I appreciate you coming on this dive with me. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. If you like this video, do me two favors. Definitely share it and also hit that like button for me. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.